Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at a Suzuki Swift Mark III and we're going to be doing front pads and discs. So basic guy, job guys, basic set of tools needed. I will put the tools in the description so please like and subscribe. So let's get this started with my cheesy but cool video. <laughs> Hey guys, first thing we're going to do is remove the front wheel trims and remove the wheels. Obviously, if you have alloy wheels, you won't need to remove the trims, but this is pretty self-explanatory. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the car on a lock to make it a bit easier to get to all the bolts. And we're going to remove the bottom slider bolt out of the caliper. Now, we only need to remove the bottom one, so we'll take a 15mm spanner and hold it on the slider and a 13mm spanner on the bolt and we'll undo the bolt. So once we got that out then, um, the reason we only take the bottom one out is because once we get the bottom bolt out, we can then hinge the caliper up and slide it out of the slider. So makes things a little bit easier. Don't have to worry about so much. So there we go. So. I'm just checking that the pipe is not kinking or anything and uh, can give it a bit of a wiggle and remove the slider. Now all these sliders have to be cleaned and greased but the standard practice. So remove the pads. These pads are actually in quite good condition. Um, this car needed discs on the other side so this is hence why we're doing this side. So we're going to remove the two carrier bolts that hold the carrier to the hub of the car. Um, they are quite tight in this instance, so I what I've done, I've just worked them back and forth a little bit. Um, you can spray a little bit of uh, WD-40 or anti-seize on them, anything like that. But I just give, I just worked mine back and forth and got them out pretty simply. So they were a little bit tight, but they came out. And off comes the carrier. Right, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the carrier up to the bench just to give it a good clean. It's a bit easier than doing it on the floor. So what I'm going to do is remove the old clips that locate the pads. So these are just anti-rattle clips, guys. So these just stop the pads from rattling about in there. They add a bit of spring tension and hold the pads nice and firm. So I'm going to remove them. And then what I'm going to do is behind them, where the pads actually sit, I'm going to wire brush. I want to get it as nice and clean as possible. Um, if there's any rust lumped up on there, um, you can get a little chisel and just tap the chisel on the rust to get the rust off. Um, in this instance, the carrier is quite tidy, so it's just a matter of a wire brush and uh, maybe a little bit of emery tape then just to clean them up. But uh, yeah, not too bad on this one, so we'll just clean them up for and yeah, as you can see, I'm feeling my finger and I can feel a bit of roughness. So grab some emery tape and just rub off any lumps or any any rust buildup you find. Just clean it back. Um, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. As long as the pads go in nice and loose and they're not tight, then there's no problem. And there we go. Right, now my pads come with new clips for the pads, so I'm going to fit them now while we're on a bench. It's so much easier on a bench, you know, you can, you know, stand up and do all this sort of stuff and clean it all up nice. When you're trying to do it on the car or on the floor, it's not as, you know, it's not as pleasant. So I like to do it on a bench. Makes life a bit easier. So that's my clips in nicely. All I'm going to do now is just clean my one slider obviously the one slider is connected to the caliper so the obviously that one there so this one down by here now i'm just going to pull the boot back and remove the slider and then give it a wipe off with a rag get any debris any any old grease or dirt that might be on it and uh, give it a good clean if these 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 pins are seized you need to remove them clean them and obviously refit them with new grease now I'm using red rubber grease um, you you can use any grease as long as it's not petroleum based anything petroleum based will eat the rubber boots that you see there now basically anything any like normal grease or anything petroleum based will eat into the rubber so you need actual specific rubber or slider grease right 
So here we are. So now we're going to remove the disc. So two locking screws, which are Phillips head. So get my Phillips head socket and just give him a nice tap to get him seated in nice. The last thing you want to do is strip these because uh, they can be a real pain if they if you strip them. Um, your best bet is a center punch. As you can see, someone has already um, struggled with these in the past and they've actually sent a punch the head of these screws but they were fine for me i had a good fitting good fitting socket and it ended up no problem so that's all you need and you can remove the two screws now if the disc is a little bit tight on you obviously mine's loose but if it's tight you can hit it off with a hammer but as you can see mine pretty much fell off so that's what we're going to do so now we're going to clean it up with a wire brush and just get any debris off you want to make sure if there's any rust or anything bad on you you need to get it off because if the disc doesn't sit flat against this hub it will give you a bad vibration obviously it needs to be true um so yeah so make sure it's nice and clean um some people lather these in copper slip i tend to just clean it off unless the disc goes on nice and loose so here's my new disc now in the packet. Now, most discs that come new are covered in oil um, for stop them rusting in you know, transit. So what I do is I take a bit of brake clean and just give them a good clean off. You don't have to be really over the top with this. As long as you just get the main of the oil off the surface of the disc where the pads are going to sit. Because obviously, if you don't get the oil off, when you run it down the road on your road test to bed the brakes in, it's going to make it slip a bit and it's you know it's going to smell and burn and you just get the worst of it off any whatever's left on the disc then when it gets hot it'll just burn off so as you can see there's my locator screws for the disc so i'm just going to apply my new disc and obviously the two screws with the, the tapered hole is the ones where the screws go couldn't put them in the other ones because obviously the screw would protrude of the disc and then the wheel wouldn't sit flush so obviously the countersunk holes on the disc are the holes where the locators go quite self-explanatory really if you think about it so yeah so we'll get them in now and grab my ratchet and give it a good tighten and away to go And there we go. So now we're going to refit the carrier. Now, obviously, Loctite on the bolts. These are probably the two most important bolts of this whole job. Um, need to make sure these are nice and tight. And obviously, Loctite the bolts. You don't want them coming loose. The last thing we want is your caliper to come off. So I'm just going to wind them in now with a ratchet. I have sped this up a bit because it is can be a bit of a long process winding these in. But yeah, there we go. Now, when I tighten these, I just tighten them with a half inch bar. Um, you can torque them. I don't actually know what the torque setting is on these ones, but a good firm tighten with a half inch bar will be more than adequate. Um, and the Loctite then will stop them coming loose. And there's my bar. There we go, nice firm, firm and tight. So as you see on the inside pad, it's got this little scraper clip, which will warn you if your pads get close to the metal. That goes on the piston side of the caliper. Just remember that on the inside. So I'm gonna locate that one first. As I can see, my pads are nice and loose. Um, they go in really easy and that's it. If they go in that easy, you know you've cleaned your carrier good enough because that's what you hope for. Now. I've made a little bit of a, an error. Um, when I took it apart, I didn't push my piston back as I'm just finding out now. So no problem. What I'm gonna do is not remove that pad. I'm gonna put that one back, remove the outer pad, and then I'm gonna close the caliper and I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and place it behind the disc and pry the piston back, which is gonna push the piston back into the, into the caliper, sorry. And then obviously put my replace my pad. Obviously, 
Frodo side of the pad towards the disc. I, you wouldn't believe how many times people put the metal side towards the disc. And then shut the caliper and refit the attachment bolt. Now, I have put Loctite on it. Um, my pads did not come with new bolts. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. This time, it just happened they didn't. It's not the end of the world. You can reuse all these bolts. Um, it's a bit... The only, the only good thing about when pads come with new bolts is they come with Loctite already on them, so you just stick them straight in where I'm reusing my old bolts, so I'm just going to stick a bit of medium strength Loctite on there just to make sure she doesn't come undone because with brakes you don't take chances, you know. And there we are. So that's it. We're just going to replace the wheel now and... Uh, that's pretty much it now obviously this car needs a good road test now and on that road test you need to firmly apply the brakes various at a few times um you will feel the brake it will make a bit of noise and be a bit loud to start off with but once the pedal goes nice and hard and your brakes come then you you're good and then obviously just one whoever's driving the vehicle to take it easy for a few miles until the brakes bed in properly but uh, yeah Dead simple. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is something everyone messes up and basically is the wheel trim. Now, for some reason people never see this, but there is a gap in the wire that goes where the valve goes. I just thought I'd point that out, guys. So, yeah. Thanks for watching my video. Um, I hope it helps. I hope it you know, gives you the confidence to go and do your own brakes. Um, yeah, so... If you have any uh, feedback, I'd love you to comment. Um, please like my pay, like my videos, and yeah, if you can drop us, if you can subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. I'm gonna try and put at least a video up a week, and uh, yeah, hopefully help you guys out in the future with more of your own uh, jobs you want to do on your vehicles. Thank you for your time, and uh, have a good day.